It is an honor now to be joined by the newest member of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame, the great Willie O'Ree. Uh, your indelible legacy, Mr. O'Ree, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. What does this latest honor mean to you? Oh, well, when I got the initial call, David, I was, I was overwhelmed, really. It's, uh, it's really a special, a special moment for me and, uh, and my family. And uh, as I said, I'm quite honored, and uh, uh, I've been uh, I've been blessed o over the uh, over the years for um, the work that I've been doing. Well, what a journey it's been! I mean, take us back. You're born in Fredericton, New Brunswick. You're a young boy there. You, you then become the first black player in the National Hockey League. Then you become the ambassador to the NHL for diversity. Uh, then you become uh, a Hockey Hall of Famer, and now a Canada Sports Hall of Famer. What are you most proud of this journey you've been on? Uh, well, I think um, I'm most proud of um, being the first black player in the National Hockey League. Willie, uh, I'm going to start off with you, and your biggest thrill, I understand, came on New Year's Day. Tell us about it. Well, yes, Ward. Uh, we played the Montreal Canadiens in Boston, and uh, I scored my first National League goal. It was not only my first, but it was the, uh, the winning goal. I had set two goals for myself to play professional hockey and hopefully one day to play in the National Hockey League. And those are the two things that I kept in the back of my mind. And uh, I, w I worked hard to, you know, to accomplish both of them. And um, I can honestly say that um, uh, since then, there's been so many wonderful things that have been happening to me in my life. And uh, yeah, it's, just, uh, it's just a nice feeling. The NHL continues to champion diversity as well as inclusion. And what's your keynote message when, when you go to these communities and you talk about those initiatives? Well, the first thing I, I tell these boys and girls that, uh, you know, be proud of who you are, uh, feel good about yourself, like yourself, and uh, don't let, if you set a goal for yourself, don't let anybody tell you you can't attain your goal. If you feel strongly within your heart, and within your mind, uh, those are the most two important things. And uh, I tell these boys and girls, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're right. And there's, there's a lot of truth to that. Well, you've always shown great perseverance. And when you talk to NHL players, Joel Ward, you know, Anthony Stewart, Wayne Simmons, they attribute their success to you, that they hit roadblocks along the way. And instead of saying, I can't do it, they chose your path and said, well, if Willie could do it, I could persevere as well. What does that mean to you? Well, it's a nice feeling, you know, when I, uh, when I first met, uh, uh, you know, some of the players and they said, Mr. O'Ree, I can't imagine what you had to go through to make it possible for players like me to play in, in, in the National Hockey League. And uh, when I first met Jerome McGinley uh, in Calgary, and, uh, you know, the first thing he said is that Mr. O'Ree, he says, I'm, I, I'm so honored and uh, so grateful to have the, uh, the opportunity to meet you and, and uh, know what you've accomplished over the years. It's funny, the players look to you and sort of say you were that inspiration for them. What about for yourself? You know, who helped you uh, evolve into this leader and role model that you've become, Willie? Well, uh, I have to be, I was the youngest of 13 children. And uh, there were, there were um, four boys and, uh, and five, uh, five girls in, in the family. Um, I have to uh, attribute it to my older brother, Richard, who uh, was not only my brother and my friend, but he, he was my mentor. And he taught me a lot of things that I would need to know if I was going to choose hockey as a career. And um, when, I was, when I was 14, I had the opportunity to play with him. He was a little older than me. But he, he just told me about, you know, about being proud of who you are. Um, always think positive and uh, always work hard. There's no substitute for hard work. And then my junior coach, Phil Watson, first year junior, my second coach, um, you know, they, they told me that uh, you have the skills and the ability to play in the National Hockey League. And from then on, I, you know, I just kept that in the back of my mind. And all of a sudden, you know, I, um, I turned pro in 1956. Von Chemlack was the coach and general manager. And then he told me the same thing. Well, he says uh, there hasn't been a black hockey player in the National Hockey League. And he says, you have the skills and the talent that you could be the first. And, you know, hearing that from, um, from coaches, I mean, it, uh, it felt good. And then it, I always kept that in the back of my mind. Uh, well, the hockey community obviously helped embrace you and, and you moved forward. Uh, and the hockey community continues to evolve. How do you, what would you like to see it look like in 50 years from now? Oh, well, first of all, I'd like to see not only more black players, but more players of color in the league. 
Um, you know, it evolved from when I played, there were six teams, and then it, and then it expanded to six more and 12 teams, and then it went to 18. And I just think that the, the league is growing, and I, I have to give a lot of credit to Commissioner Beckman of the National Hockey League. His vision of um, what he wanted to do and, and want to make possible for, for the game has, has just been great. And uh, um, with the players that are playing in the, in the league right now, uh, I think they can all attribute to the, the, what has been going on and the, the opportunities that are there and are available for these players. Uh, finally, Ms. Already, what has surprised you most? You know, when you think about the journey you've been on and you talked about the pride you feel and the people who've helped you, what surprised you most when you think about a, a little boy in Fredericton to, to who you are now uh, with everything that's transpired? Oh, I, I just think that um, I, I, um, I think that, uh, you know, being the youngest of 13 children and then, and then just setting a goal for myself and working hard. And, and uh, my parents uh, were, were very supportive. That, you know, they supported me while I, while I was growing up and they knew uh, what I wanted to do and they knew the goals that I had set for myself. And, um, I just feel that uh, uh, I'm still alive and, and still able to, uh, hopefully when, when things settle down, to travel around and um, visit more, more cities, uh, talk to more boys and girls and let them know that um, there is another sport that they can play if they want to and all they have to do is, is show up and uh, we'll do the rest. We'll give them. We'll help them uh, build their confidence and uh, make sure that they uh, they have a, a fun time. And, you know, hockey is a fun sport. Well, Mr. Ree, your message has been heard loud and clear. It's been a, a wonderful message for all these decades. And on behalf of everyone, congratulations once again into your election as a builder into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. Oh well, that's wonderful, and thank you very much. And. Uh, Congratulations to all the recipients, the other recipients that have been voted here.